Right guys, um, I'm waiting. I gotta order up some more bits and bobs for the uh, this uh, casting epoxy stuff. So uh, while I'm waiting, um, here's another purchase I've been looking for for a while. Um, it's not in the bestest condition, but it's a solar <coughs> CBB 1.6 um, capacitance bridge, um, and so. Uh, you can see right away that the hinges are gone, so the um, the hinge lid is missing, and so I'll have to make one up. Um, it's got this nice tongue and groove. Um, so yes, um, that's definitely something that I'll have to do. The uh, the mains cord I uh, I cut it off, or I snapped it off, because this uh, cable is just so hard. Um, it literally just breaks. Um, so, um, yeah, hopefully I'll have better luck with this one than I did with that heat kit thing I got a while back, which turned out to be a complete piece of junk. Anyway, let's have a quick look inside. Well, the good news is this looks largely original, pleased to say. So, uh, at least it should be uh, rebuildable and uh, made to function um, in the way that I want. So uh, so yeah, this is just the first look. I guess I'll uh, change all the caps in here, check all the resistors. According to the manual, everything should be 2% tolerance. I may not be able to find everything I need at that level, but even if I uh, put in regular components, it'll be good enough for what I need, which is Primarily just uh, leakage testing on the uh, on the different caps. Um, so yes, here we go. Um, so this one should be interesting little project to do as a bit of uh, electronic uh, renovating and some woodwork, which is uh, two of my favorite things. Right, so I've uh, replaced the uh, the caps except these two electrolytics because they don't have the right values and since they're supposed to be uh, uh, close tolerance I'll wait and order up some uh, of the right value. Obviously the 0.02's I didn't have so I just used uh, paralleled 0.01's I had a 2 microfarad one and I had a half microfarad, so that's good. Uh, a couple of resistors I checked seem to be okay, so I haven't checked them all yet. Um, I've replaced the power cord. Fortunately, I only had white, but hey, it'll do. Um, and I replaced the uh, on-off switch, because the, uh, the chrome coating and everything and that is all ruined, or the, whatever the coating is. And so... Uh, I had a couple spare, and uh, so I put a new one in, and just generally gave it a bit of a tidy up, and so I think that'll do until the electrolytics arrive. Oh, uh, there was uh, one cap that had no marking on it at all. Um, fortunately, it's the only one that didn't have any marking, and so by a process of deduction from the parts list and the circuit diagram, I was able to deduce that it's this guy right, that this one here was 0.5 microfarads. So um, luckily, it was the only one. Um, the only cap I'm not immediately going to replace is this mica guy right here. Um, but we'll see later if that needs to be done or not. So some bits and pieces arrived. So I think I've replaced all the caps now. Um, except maybe the mica that's in there. Um, I put a um, tag strip in here to replace the two microfarad one. Um, but rather than go through that whole trouble, I just put the new electrolytics. Um, I just strapped them onto the old ones, at least for now. Since I went to so much trouble with the last one of these, only to find that it was a complete uh, waste of time, um, we'll see if this thing works first. Um, I think we're about ready um, to give it a shot. I think I'm going to do it upside down um, on here, because uh, 
you kind of want to be able to see if uh, I should be able to see if the rectifier uh, tube lights up. So I got it in the Bariac, we're set to about 115 volts. And here we go. Okay, no excessive current drain. No, no Bernie smell. And the thing will be to see whether or not, okay, the rectifier is lighting. I don't know if that shows up on the uh, camera or not. Probably not. Oh, and there's green. So the, uh, actually, uh, given the high level of ambient light here, that's actually quite a green green. And so the eye is open at the moment because it's on the open or short. And then it closes. And it stays closed until I get all the way around to the other end where it also says open or short. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, so I guess next is I'll have to rig up some leads. Um, there seems to be multiple versions of this because I've seen the other ones online have three connectors here. Mine only has two. Um, so I guess I'll just have to read up and make sure that the manual I got is for this one and not for a different one. Um, okay, this is looking good. So I just need to rig up some leads, grab a few capacitors, and um, see how uh, how much calibration this thing might need. Okay, so I've rigged up a set of leads. Uh, they're probably not perfect, but they're certainly adequate for what we're trying to do. So I have a 0.5 microfarad cap in here and the instruction said you set it to C times 1. So reading on the C scale and it's as it says here times 1 so whatever it says. So here's 0.5. So let's see how close we are uh, when we get the uh, magic eye to open. real close that's almost spot on the point five here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Turn out the lights see if it makes any difference. Um yes yeah, so here we're close and here we are open. And reading off the scale it's just about point five so uh I'll check the other two scales, obviously, and uh, then I'll get on to the uh, the real reason I want to get one of these guys, which is to uh, be able to do leakage tests. So we'll uh, get on to that uh, next. Okay, all the ranges work pretty well. Um, so I tried all the different values of caps and you get correct. Um, checking the leakage uh, side of things. The one thing that I find counterintuitive, according to uh, the manual, is the voltages go in, in the opposite sequence. So 5 is 100, 4 is 200 volts, 3 is 300, 2 is 400, and 1 is 500. So you got to start from 5 and work your way up to 1. Um, so this uh, cap here is the 0 0.5 that I took out of here. Um, and uh, so uh, on the uh, 100 volts we have nothing okay we start to have leakage on the 200 volt setting it's getting a little bit less but it's still there I'm sure if I go to the 300 volt setting, the thing will just be flashing away. You probably can't see any of that on the camera. Um, but um, if I go to the next setting, okay, now it's going pretty regularly now. So, yeah. So, it looks like the um, leakage detector is working. 
little neon bulb is working because they're really hard to find so I was going to be in trouble if that wasn't working um, so yeah I think next step will be to uh, look at the case so uh, we'll be shifting from electronics to uh, cabinet making <laughs> so just having a quick look at the box to the piece that I do have um, it's basically sound, and the joints I think are coming apart. Um, it's got replacement feet, and I think they're hard as a rock, so we'll get proper rubber ones to go on there. Um, yeah, the uh, the joint has come apart here. I think I think it might have been re-glued here on top. Um, it certainly has movement here, so we'll see about fixing that up. Um, I think somewhere in the manual it gives the total outside dimensions for the for the instruments, so I should be able to um, take those and add so I know what what depth to make the top. And um, yeah, probably the only challenge will be getting wood exactly this thickness because I'm sure this is an imperial thickness and uh, I won't be able to get that right off the shelf in this part of the world. Yeah, this, this side here is moving as well so this is not uh, glued up. But I think we should be able to uh, take care of all of that. There's no uh, cracks or serious damage other than to the surface. So yeah, we'll uh, stabilize this guy with some glue and stuff and uh, then we'll get on to making a lid for it. So this uh, corner down here had completely come undone. So I've glued that up and clamped it up and we'll uh, let that set. Before we go any further Okay, so the, um, the base, the box itself, is basically stable at this point. Um, there seems to be a cutout here, which is not original, so I'm not quite sure what that was put there for. Doesn't show on any of the uh, photos I have of the device. Okay, so um, luckily the manual gives the dimensions of the box, and it took me a while to figure out how they're oriented, but it seems like uh, they do it with the uh, carry handle on the top here. Uh, which of course means in reality the instrument is kind of upside down like this, but anyway. Um, so the width is 9.5 inches, which seems correct. This they're calling the height, which according to the book is 7.5, mine measures 7 and a quarter. And then this would be the depth, which they say is 6 and a quarter. Mine actually measures just under 4.5 to here, so I assume it's about an inch and 3 quarter deep lid that goes on the top so at least I know the uh, sizing of this of the lid um, and just to keep us keep me on my toes here this thing is quarter inch except the back this back piece is 3 eighths which you can see here because uh, with the, uh, the box jointing on here everything is nice and square down at the bottom they're rectangles um, so, I assume this is um, cherry as wood, so I'll have to see what I can find, because cherry is not really native to my part of the world. So I'll have to see if I can find something suitable locally, if not, then we'll have to maybe look at uh, seeing if I can order some online, um, which hopefully will work if I need it. Um, I guess as any of you guys uh, doing woodwork know, um, rules on exporting and importing wood have tightened up significantly in recent years. Um, but let's hope cherry is not one of the, those endangered or protected species that uh, has all those controls on it. I mean, I know it from guitar work. That there are, um, but then there are mostly things like rosewood and mahogany, which tend to be increasingly rare. Okay, um, so 
I'm going to clean it up. It has a very light coat of varnish on it, nothing particular. I mean, when I just started rubbing to clean the top surface, uh, it started to come off. So, I'll clean all that up. Um, yeah, we'll get stuck in.